In this episode of Let's Be Real, of course, we have the biggest conversation and some, or some of the most beautiful hosts you've never seen before. Of course, I'm CEO Charles Otieno, and I'm hosting one of my good friends, hey. the noisiest man. In How are you town. doing? <laughs> At least I make profitable noise. Noise that actually helps build a conversation. But relax. I'm relaxed. Simon. I'm relaxed. Of course, we have a new host <laughs> today. We have a lady, Malaika Mama. Asante Sana. What's your name? Tell them. One My day. name is Lisa Christopherson, a.k.a. Mama Chewy, from the Real Housewives of Nairobi. All right. So okay, I will, can I give the honor to actually introduce myself in a good way? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Simon Says, and indeed, I'm, I make content that actually makes you smile and think at the same time. And also, I'm a digital marketing consultant in which I can help you make content that can actually help you grow your business or even your personal brand. That's me. I'm the most quiet man Ooh. in town. I don't know why it feels like a class next to the noisiest guy you put the quietest guy. <laughs> I feel like I'm guarded by monitors here. But my name is Vikash. Uh, my second name is quite controversial, at least in this country. It's called Patni. Ah. But uh, no, no relation. Are you related to Patni? I wish. Are you a uh, his man? Yes. I wish again. Yes. Yeah. Wish but no, nothing, nothing close. I mean, I was punished in school even if I did the homework because they thought he's related to me. No way. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, man. But, uh, sad. Shame on that teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, If you're watching guys. this, yeah. let's be Thank real. Thank you. Sana, Sana. <laughs> I think we, we just dig deep into our conversations. Sure. Simon, roll it off. Exactly. No, today we're going to start on a deadly note. But a deadly interesting <laughs> note. Here's the thing. When it comes to even like even there's been many cases of um, a lot of killings that have actually been going on in which like servants have actually been killing uh, even the masters. And it's just a lot of friction that's going on between now the, uh, the person who's actually you're working for and actually even there's a case of even a farmer actually killed one of the um, uh, person that he actually works for. And now I'm wondering, see this friction that happens between the workers and the bosses. And that's a lot that's going on out there. Could it be economic issues mm -hmm. that's going on? Because right now, everybody now is blaming everything on the economy, like Ruto's economy, or so-and-so economy, or it's even a mental state that's actually going on in causing that people to react in this certain way. Even I just want to ask you, straight from, even from you, maybe even just starting forth, is that even with these killings going on, some people may even defend it and say, you see what the person who was their boss was treating them in a certain way, and hence now their behavior is somehow validated. Mm. Is that in any way an excuse for such behavior? Go ahead. Well, I, I think that um, mental health is a very serious issue in the country today. And uh, Kenya National Human Rights Commission released data uh, last year and this year, and they say that in every one Kenyan, four, in every four Kenyan, one of them has mental issue. Oh. So the way we are four, I don't know who has one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would just like to say that, you yes. know, we've just finished filming Real Housewives of Nairobi, yes. and one of my fellow cast members, yes. Sonal, yes. Um, has admitted she's got mental health issues. And it really is uh, a disease that we should take seriously because mental health is broad spectrum. It could be anxiety, it could be bipolar, it could be um, depression. depression even, yes. or, you know, narcissistic beh manners yes. and behaviors is also part of depression uh, as well. So it's something to be taken seriously. But going back to staff yeah. and bosses, we know we've had in our history here in Kenya, uh, the famous Joy Adamson, wife of yeah. George Adamson. Mm. Remember the movie, yes, Elsa? Yes, Elsa, yeah. Um, she was chopped up by her, her pishi, her cook up in Shaba, in northern Kenya. Mm. Why? Maybe she was treating the cook really badly. Nobody mm. really knows, but it's happened subsequently. And another lady, Joan Root, in, in uh, Naivasha, also got killed by her staff. Yeah, that's okay. You know, just to ask even you, when it comes to even these killings that you're actually even seeing, you know, there's a lot that's even going on. Even she's saying that, that the workers and also the bosses, and that sort of thing. What do you think about that? Yeah, I find it fascinating because, one, there's frustrations already going on. I was at a restaurant and I could hear the owner of the restaurant screaming at the waiters. And I wasn't sure if I want to eat the food, but then I was more scared about <laughs> what the guy is going to go through. Are you know? spit on it? Yeah. <laughs> What's going to happen? You can shout at the waiters and of course they'll remove your frustration on your food. But imagine that guy who's screaming and like, like she's mentioned, the chef chopped off the boss. <laughs> yes. Like, you know, they use their skills like, you know, I've been chopping carrots, but today it's going I to be I want to chop next. you. Yes. Yeah. You have to cut it off. Yeah, because it, it's, it's really 
embarrassing to be shouted at in front of a people you don't even know, strangers. Mm, Let me even, true. even you touched about mental health. I just want to ask, even just here, here, is mental health ever an excuse for bad behavior? Being honest, you see, there, there are two. This is uh, there are two things here. One. There are people who actually suffer from mental conditions, mm -hmm. and we know, and we said one out of four. And then there are some people who also just flip. Someone who might just be good behavior, and some something just happens which turns your mind, and you just find yourself. And that's why bipolar people are very dangerous to be well, sometimes spent. around. Yeah. yeah. You slap someone all of a sudden. True. But it's also true. that it is, you know, that you realize, and I've seen it with subsequently people that I know, for example, mm. who are bipolar but refuse to take the dowers, yes. and then they start drinking. Yes. And that is, that's actually a really bad uh, cocktail yes. to deal with, and you see how they flip and they become their personality. They become somebody completely strange. I've personally experienced that. And it's, it's scary. And what we are doing at Lifestyle in Gigiri, mm. every month there's a young Kenyan girl called Warimi that approached me and said, look, I've watched your show. I've seen that Sonal is, has got mental health mm. issues, suffers from depression, as I do. Mm. And she came to me and said, can I talk about it? Because Kenyans feel it's a taboo. It's not. You have to talk about it because we all want to help. Mm. So every month we have a forum one Saturday, the next will be on Saturday the 12th of August at Lifestyle where you will engage and in this one they're going to dance to heal. So doing Kizumba dancing is one way that you can heal yourself out of depression. That's true. Taking action. Taking that's, action. The, that's the thing because even when people just say, yo, I want to talk about my issues, boss, you can sound like a complainer. Like it's nothing you're just here, you're that kind of a person who's just now always complaining about issues. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, bruh, you know that kind of a person. I don't want to talk to CEO because that's the kind of person who they're just gonna bring me issues. There's, you know that friend who always has a problem with I feel them, like, like this happens so much with men. Exactly, like <laughs> bruh, you got too many issues, bruh. Yeah, so like the man just can't say anything. You know? It's like, what's wrong with this guy? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have solutions, you got problems. You're and always I, complaining. Exactly. But you can, so, if you're going to have an issue about talking about it, actually now have a solution. And just like when you mentioned, have a way that you can actually even work towards that uh, solution that you actually but, have. So but, you don't actually kill somebody. Yeah, but also for the house helps, I also ask myself that, are Kenyans really serious when they hire people they work, mm -hmm. who work for them? If you look at the, the way we hire our home servants, or we call them home managers, mm -hmm. You just go to a bureau, pick someone you don't know. You do not have a background check. The ID is fake. So you yeah. come and live with a stranger in your house. True. Then we are going to sleep, like the, mom, the, the Khalifi case. This girl had been stealing from the employer. The employer realizes she has lost 32000 over 100000 and asks, and asks the house, uh, house help, I left money here. Where did it go? But you see, if you look at that scenario, she goes, works in her bedroom, doesn't close the door. That's in true. the morning, she's found dead. But the, my biggest worry is the way we hire people. There's no due diligence. Someone appears with an ID. It's a fake ID. Yeah. She's crossed from a different country, Uganda. Mm. She has a fake name, fake ID. You do not know the home, family, nothing. You, this person, you just know the person the day she appeared, it's like from heaven. Is it always the bosses, though, to blame? For example, here's what I mean. Mm. Someone can come even with a fake ID and actually be a very good person. But someone can, and then there's also this way, in the sense that when you actually now, you can't necessarily judge someone's character based on ID and other qualifications. But there's, I understand the ID that you can actually follow up and know who they yes, actually yes. are. That's easier way. But then here's the thing. How do you then now communicate and actually have that communication between um, the, the servant and also you as an employer? You in see, a sense, it can actually be a very symbiotic relationship. You can have symbiotic relationship, but remember that when you're hiring someone, it, it's like any other job. Mm -hmm. You have to really, really dig deep and find out uh, his history, someone's history. And you must, the problem when, when you're hiring people to work for us, especially domestic workers, mm. We do not, the person who cooks your food, you do not take a lot of interest in his qualification, in his skill sets. You just want, well, Moosha, mm -hmm. the you, children are they taking care of? Yeah, that's what you, you don't even know what culture this kid is learning what do you from. Think? What do you think mm -hmm. as a lady usually? 
Well, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's very important that you, um, you do your due diligence. You can't just invite anybody into your home without knowing who they've come from. And I never refer staff to anybody because if anything backfires, it would come back to me. You don't want that Ay, responsibility. You don't want that. Huh? I don't want no problems. No, but you know, even recently, we talked about it here with somebody who said, oh, you know that girl? I said, she got fired. She was referred to me by her sister who had worked for me and done my social media for seven years. Mm. But when people are dishonest, there's many ways of mm. also having people in your inner circle, mm. being in your office, your space. This is your prime time of your day, mm. right? So you've got the most energy from mm. 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. Mm. weekly. You're spending time with these people and they're dishonest. Things start to disappear because they think they can. They can get away with it because you know who I am. You know my sister, right? Mm. Yeah. Hey, the way you came in, my friend, the way you walk out. But even you, like, hey, boss, we know each other. What's wrong? You know, <laughs> like, I can bring you, like, stay. Um, what do you think about it? Yeah, like, I, I think now you have to ask questions before you hire them. So now if I get a new Ascari or a new house, I'll, when was the last time you had a heartbreak? And just to make That's sure. a qualifying question. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very qualifying question. You it's remove somebody's anger on me, man. <laughs> oh, because then, oh, because uh, the anger you know. now might come up and then now, bam. Violence. But but you know while we are saying that I think for many Indian households the Kenyan Indians here a lot of house helps are given more respect than their husbands because they're considered very 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 important to be in the house because you won't do the fagia you won't do the pangusas mm -hmm. you are not going to wash the clothes so who's going to do it so you need to treat that person with like Atmosphere. importance yeah <laughs> but I have another yeah. example I sorry I would just yes. like to share with yes. you talking about having people within your space right. Yes. So in 2006, I got very sick. Long story short, diagnosed with stage four cancer. I'm in Johannesburg getting this diagnosis, given 10 days to live. Kumbe, all my staff in Nairobi thinking, I am mama na kufa sasa. Everything. One guy, my accountant, Sammy, robbed me for everything. Fake my signature. The gallery was alive, things being sold, pocketed the money, not paying the artist. That's another thing. You mm. just never know. So now, you know, you become streetwise mm. as much as possible from bad experiences. Mm. They give you now that knowledge to actually know and Ooh. make better decisions. So, you know, you've got to be tough. So somebody might be really good. Hey, I but never trust anybody anymore. No, you can't. Lisa, that's a really sad story. It's reality. That's what Ooh. the show is about. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> that's, let's, let's, let's that let's happens a lot. Next. That let's happens a lot. That happens topic. a lot. Yeah, exactly. Lisa, go ahead. Us on to the next topic. Go ahead. So, could you just introduce me? Oh, yes. <laughs> I was told you are the do CEO. Do me the honors. No, do me the honors. And before we do that, can we just say cheers? Che oh, and cheers. cheers to Dr. Catherine. And Master thank you for this delicious Samantha wine. Yes. Uh, cheers. 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 Cheers right cheers. there. Cheers. Cheers, Bikash. Cheers. Thanks for drinking so, before cheers, cheers. cheers. Look at him. <laughs> Your topic is um, about essentials of partnership. How far can you help your partner? And what happens if you don't have a partner? Let me give you a brief story. Um, one of the Kenyan singers, one of, uh, I call him my son, Bahati. Ah, I, I like him, yes. I call him son. my son, yes. So, Bahati, we have a long history with him, so I, I, I like him as a person, I like him as a musician, and I always wish him very well. So he's been trying to help the wife, Diana, Mm -hmm. and Kabiwa Jesus and yeah Nidiwa I saw that Jesus. too I saw mm. that too so people are doing many and crazy things just in 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 in, la in love so that to help the partner so the question is how far would you yeah. help your partner grow I think you know on this subject here where I would say you have a partner could be a companion could be a lover it could be uh, you know, a wife or a husband, yes. and you both are working together, and you want, you love that person so much, you want yes. that person yes. to succeed, uh, but you must have respect for that person, is what I would say. Mm. You know, and there's a big difference being in love and having respect. Many yes. people are in love, but they don't respect. Many people respect, but are not in love. True. So there's two different things that I would like you all to really mm. understand, and let's clarify that. And also we say, I respect you enough to know your boundaries. Yeah, I want you to succeed and I will push you to those limits, but he can't push you that, that he will also take you down. He or she will take you down. Mm. Like you want to be together, you're achieving 
an amazing, let's say you're, you're, you're hosting a show together. Yes. But you know that person's limitations. So it's very important to understand how far you're going to go to push the other one to succeed without them pulling you down. Because that I've seen multiple times, sure. you know. And then some of them are doing things that are fake. They're not real. They're just creating stories. Bure, kabisa, that at the end <laughs> will backfire. Uh, yes, I, I even agree with you because even now, even when I speak to the toxic men out there for a second, because the main thing is this, a lot of guys out there who now you're starting to cater to your woman's every single thing, like she says, do this, do that, and now you're all avidly out here going out of your way. It was not, I don't even think it was bad, it was like the first impression, like, yes, I want to wear the wig to actually accommodate this. That can be fun for some time, but then there's also a level of boundaries that you, even you mentioned that you gotta have. Even as a guy, yeah. don't just be Mr. Yes Man. Mr. Yes Baby, I will do anything for you. I will, cl I will take a grenade for you. Whoa, where? No, the main <laughs> thing is, <laughs> the main so, thing so is, yeah. Simon, they're saying you cannot support your partner's no, you support. to that level. No, you support. Yes. You support, like for example, you support it to some extent, but I also believe in this. Even it can be something small, like for example, maybe you had a girlfriend who's like, maybe even guys who have been watching this at night, maybe you have a girlfriend who's even still on campus, or even just doing some project, or she's doing some proposals, so and so forth. Yeah. And she knows how to do the paperwork, but she's asking you to help her out. Maybe you can just give her guidance and tell her, you can do this, but you don't actually do it for her. Because she's an individual that who needs to actually learn the skill for herself. I can give you guidance. I will not do it for you. Now, that's the key thing because I recognize that you are an individual on your own. And indeed, there's a skill that you can actually do. Not if you're actually bombarded to the extent that I can actually see that, hey, okay, you have too much here. Let me help you out fully. I got you on that. I can support you. Like, for example, even wearing the wig and going up, you can do that. But then now if you overly do it, now you're becoming Mr. Yes Man. You're saying yes to everything. You're catering uh, to that. And Omar, what do you think? Talk. Yeah, I th <laughs> well, I think uh, it's the times we live in have also changed because what used to be support system back in the days when there were no phones, your mom can support you by being up and making you coffees while you're studying for your exams. That was one way of support. But it's not, a, it's a different thing if she comes with you and sits for your exam for you and writes the paper for you. Yeah, it is. Uh, what's yeah. putting up on social media today is a performance. Many kids know if you feature your parents and do a dance or a reel, make a reel with your mom, with your grandma. It's kind of cool. Going to watch Barbie with my grandma. She's wearing pink, I'm wearing pink. But then you don't even talk to her at night. Oh, you did that? I, I'm so <laughs> hurt by it. <laughs> okay, so you don't have to tell everyone you played my grandma and we went for the movie. It's okay. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's a performance. Yeah. Um, yeah. And why are we doing it? What are the priorities? For some likes, for some comments, to go viral. But, that's but the, the real thing is that they don't talk to the grandparents, they don't talk to the parents. Mm. So when you're supporting this person, even when you're doing the wife and husband kind of dynamic, yeah, for social media, for the world, yeah, let's put up posts together. Are you guys really talking when the camera is off? Yeah. Are you guys getting along? Is he really supporting you? Like she said, is there respect? That's key. So, so Vikash, what you're saying is basically that people are pushing this social media narrative to a, to a level where it is not recommended. People are doing it for the likes, for the co comments, yet in deep inside is nothing. They're as hollow as Dodo. That, but I also feel the dynamic of a lot of things have changed. Friendship as well. Yes. Um, I come from a very old school where my thinking of my belief of friendship is the one non-negotiable thing about friendship is loyalty. Yes. So if you're my friend and you're not getting along with someone, that guy has done harm to you. I just not naturally cut off with that person because you're my friend, mm -hmm. regardless of my relationship with, with that, that person. person. Yeah. But not everyone's like that. No, Some may say, yo, truth. that's beef with, between you and that person. Why should I support? Tomorrow I might need to do business with this person. And even to add to, the, even to what he's saying right there about the whole social media and everything mm -hmm. is that a lot of people, and even you, you know them, what they would do is they will never call you to wish you happy birthday. Do what? They'll post you and you don't even know. Everybody's <laughs> now out here like, let me post you for your happy birthday. They're posting, they're posting, and they never even talk to you. They don't even know what you're going through. They never even give you a call. Actually, literally, the true friends will actually give you a call on your birthday. They'll call you and say, hey, happy birthday. They want to know how you're doing. They actively are interested in who you are as an individual. Even coming back to even the topic you got discussing about supporting the partners even uh, in itself, is that supporting is, of course, has to go both 
both ways in that aspect of things. When you over support, because even there are like even ebbs and flows in a relationship. There are times where you know very well she likes you a little bit more. Then you know there's a time where you like her a little bit more. And that imbalance leads to now different modes of expression of support, even modes of expression of affection. Yes. That's what I have seen. Or what I've used. That's actually true. There's yes. ebbs and flows, hence now the support is but different also, in levels. I agree, but also remember that um, if you look at the individuals, their personality and their backgrounds mm. plays a lot in how people relate. Mm. If, for example, and if you come from a different background, if you look at the two people we are mentioning, you find that they had a very rough childhood. So they're trying to overcompensate. Doing yeah. the most. To do their partners. So if you come from the background where you are deprived of that affection, of that love, of that, and you grew on your own, and then you are in this public space, so you try to overcompensate. And that's what is really playing here. Many of these individuals, they are overcompensating their lack of in their, mm. past li in their earlier lives. And when it comes out very badly that now people, you start wearing wigs, you start wearing their clothes, you soon you'll wear their underwear. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what's wrong? <laughs> if you do it in private. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But I agree <clears throat> that today people are, are really trying to, to chase clout and do things today that are not normal. Yes. They're not because normal. they're trying to get attention. And many people that we know as well, that you know, you're suddenly you're buying followers, you're buying likes, mm. and uh, you know, nothing is real. So you, nobody keeps it real anymore. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah that's keeping. You it know, real. the most important thing I think is that you, as an individual, yes. need to look after for yourself. Yes. First. Your and mental then state. Your mental state, your physical yeah. health as yeah. well. Yeah. You know, we always say beauty comes from within. Right? Does it? Right? Does it? So, <laughs> yes. You've got to love yourself before well, you can you? love somebody else. <laughs> yeah. And you've got to really understand, are you going to take that person on that journey? Um, are they going to elevate you, rejoice in your happiness, or are they mm. going to pull you down? So it's something that people really need to think hard about. Like you were talking earlier about the domestic stuff. Yeah. Who do you bring into your life? Mm. Check it out. Who are you going to support to get out there? Speaking of, you, you. No, actually, I think now that we've talked about, you know, men wearing the ladies' wings yeah. and <laughs> yes, underwears, yes, but yes. what about now what's come out in the society is a lot of women are wearing the trousers in the houses. Oh. They are being the bread earners. Uh, they are being the <laughs> providers. What happens in a situation where your partner is earning more than you and she's the bread, the breadwinner of the family? That happens, and that's happening a lot right now, especially to many guys, because a lot of ladies... Um, the, the women empowerment movement has been effective, yeah. has been effective, and it's actually led to actual results in which now the lady actually earns a bit more than you. And hence, even as a man, you can feel a little bit <laughs> emasculated. <laughs> and that is actually a very serious thing. So what usually happens is now, as a man, what I've actually seen is very effective is define yourself beyond the realms of financial capability. Because that will make you more stable as a man in your confidence because you will not be shaken when now your pockets are thin, your pockets are full. Because you can tell a man when, you're, when you weigh like this, that means you're easily shaken. You're not a true self-centered in who you actually are. And that's even now defining yourself what you've accomplished and everything. Because now when the woman now earns a little bit more money than you, guess what's going to happen? You're, no, she's not the one picking up the dishes from the table. She'll look at you inside and say, because yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, like you hey too. what's up boys yeah i was at work all day and ceo said it with such passion i was actually going to go pick stuff <laughs> <laughs> well what do you think like for example yeah, you in know, that case. Some, so i'm danish of origin and in denmark and even in danes outside i think there are more danes outside of denmark than uh, that are in denmark anymore mm -hmm. those dynamics have changed as well yes and anyway here i know many house husbands yes. who love it the wife is the breadwinner she goes to work hey i'm on the golf course and i can oh. go and have a drink with my buddy in the evening yeah he'll be happy to go do the shopping and cook and you know what they're happy because they made it work they made that decision that saying you know i have this amazing opportunity to get this job okay it's okay if you don't work because i've earned enough for both of us all my expenses are paid let's do it Life is a journey. Life is an adventure. So I think it's also how you look at it, you know. And women, for Lesana Lakini, some of the women are actually, it's their own fault because they become these alpha females that mm -hmm. Zamani, the man would pick up your luggage, yes. open the door, 
I mean, do you ever see a, I'm asking you gentlemen, do you ever see a gentleman around, you know, who picks up the luggage, opens the doors, and all that gallantness has vanished. It's a vanishing world. And I asked a man one day, I said, what's happened to this? And he said, Shariako, you women want to be independent? You can open your own doors. You can nah, pick your own luggage. I, Lisa, I opened the door for you today, right Lisa, now. <laughs> Lisa. It was lucky, wasn't no, it? The I, know, I know somebody who really wanted a guy who opens doors and is good with money. And I was like, oh, you want a conductor? Wow. <laughs> there Lisa, you go. <laughs> the cost of living, Lisa, is very high. The cost of living is so high that there's no time to open doors. But back to you, back to... Really? The, so we take the elevator, right? Yeah, we take the elevator. The exactly. cost of living no is need. high. <laughs> so now, let's, let's, let's look at... And, and these scenarios are there. There mm -hmm. are women who are good. But for young men, I always advise them that, my friend, if you won't marry a woman and she earns more than you, you must be submissive. To an extent. You, you just must, not to an extent. You Everything. Yes, because she's wearing the pants. Continue, but, but I'll have a to continue. But I would also you. interrupt you there and say, because of the, the, the quantity of the money that the woman brings the, and versus the salary that he brings home, for example, yes. it doesn't really matter that, yeah, she makes more money, but he can still be the head of the family. It doesn't work in most of the families because when a woman makes more money she will want to come home by the time she wants mm -hmm. and i'm talking about the african culture the way it is bestowed mm -hmm. Continue. the african culture was that the man would take care of the family and you take care of your whole family the relatives and all that and when the woman realizes that you are not taking care of that role which you are supposed to do even their parents will start disrespecting you that's they true. will really, really disrespect you. And they'll ask you, we gave you our daughter to take care of. So the moment this, this dynamics change, remember you are going to fight a gender war here. Now, here's the thing. Here's the only pushback I'll give. What you're saying is that the only way you can actually protect and actually now give a, um, what you call it, a security to a woman is only financial. It there is. Are men, no, there are a lot of weak men out here with, with finances, and women know them, they use them and manipulate them. To my fair, and they're there, they send money <laughs> and they're gone. And they, you know it, women, you know it, you manipulate them all the time. They are weak, rich men, and they're strong, poor men. A man is not defined only by the realms in which he can actually financially provide. And hence, even, that's now, here's the thing, that's why even if she out earns you, there are ways to provide. For example, if now she has the car, right? She's gone to work, car breaks down. Is she going to call you because you're resourceful to actually come and fix the car? Because she knows he is handy. Light goes off. Are you able to get your butt up on there and actually fix it? Are things being fixed and are things being sure. done? Even if she finances a project, are you able to make sure and ensure that all the details, did the gardener come, did the things happen, are things actually executed? My man has got my back because he executes. Even though I finance, yeah. he executes. And execution is a very key component for a man. Because a man who cannot execute and only finance, you're a flimsy, weak man. But, but that is for 10% of the men you're speaking about. 10%, what do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> that is what you mean That's by only that. only 10%. 90% <laughs> mean? of men. Yes. 90% of men, and I will tell you, even if you ask these ladies here, there's no woman who will marry down and look for a man without money. Yo, a man who can put it down. I would tell him. Well. A man who can put it down. <laughs> Which one? I think also here that you know, many women I mean, want Even to these end. girls here we are seeing, none of them, apart from Lisa, maybe. Lisa, you know. <laughs> Okay. No, one wants, a week, no one wants a man without pocket fulls of money. Who doesn't have land? My friend, mm. Simon, you must live in this country. But Stop what, living in... in land other. is not the only source of wealth. There are other ways to Listen. get there. Uh, there are. Yeah. 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 House, yeah. money, yeah. all these things. But Six. also, if, if we're talking also about the woman who is financially stable, yes. right? Yes. So yes. she's not worried about all of that, really. So I'm talking about... I'm on you with you here, Sam. Is that you have a man <laughs> that is your pillar? Yes. <laughs> that yes. he's your my pillar. pillar. Of your strength. Yes. My pillar, my strength. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I'm different because yeah. If I have a breakdown and my I have a flat tire, I can change my own tire. I'm a rally driver, yes. right? So, yes. I can change that bulb. I'm a handy yeah. girl. So we're independent that way. But it's still nice. I would still love somebody. Yeah, you know, you can do, actually do it. I would enjoy <laughs> uh, that. Women. And you know, you can cook. It's okay. You can do it. 
Give me yeah. a break. It's a pleasure. Oh. It's also the pleasure as a woman who is independent to have a man that can actually spoil you mm. and treat you nicely. So cook See? for you. Scrub your back in that bubble See? bath, guys. You know, really? It's beautiful. And you know, when you're up there swimming and we, somewhere. And take you for a holiday. Take you for a holiday. Bring the <laughs> bubbles. Take you on holiday <laughs> weekend. You I, know, I, just I, call I you wait, darling. Wait, hold up. Let, let me, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> well, I have a burning question for you. Yes. <laughs> oh, Lord. What is the criteria for respect? Because I remember for the longest time when I was in school, the hot girls that you go for. Yes. We'd think, how do we get just yes. for them to know we exist? Yes. <laughs> And they wouldn't look in your direction. Mm. And then today when I see who they've ended up with, it was never about the looks. It was never about the values. It was never about how does he treat me. It's about, man, he's got money. I can go wherever I want. Yeah. Hey, for me, I would say... But let me tell you one thing. Stuff. Money does not bring happiness. And I think that everybody who... Okay, that one. That, no, yeah. I can tell you <laughs> <laughs> Money can get you financial freedom, uh, but it doesn't buy happiness. It cannot buy your health. And it can't buy love. And let me tell you, wherever you're going after this life... Mm. There's no shopping malls. So enjoy life today to the fullest. And as a man, where, where? Just make sure so, you go. So if you I, just I'm with Vikash here. Money cannot buy you happiness, Lisa. I agree 100%. Hmm. But, or health. But it can prolong your life. It can also cause a lot of stress. Yeah, but it can prolong your life. Depends on how, you, how healthy you are. No, if you're sick and you have no money, you'll die. Sometimes. If you're sick and you have a bit of money, you can extend it for a day. So or that means you can afford health insurance? Yeah, you couldn't afford. Mm. Hey, but well, the cash. I, yeah. We, only, we need to go for a break. Yeah, go ahead. This so, thing so, is too hot. So if your wife is the one paying for the cable right now yeah. and she's got the remote, get it out for hands <laughs> and we'll be back by the time you have the remote, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. New Superstay Vinyl Ink from Maybelline, New York. Shake up your long wear with no budge vinyl color. Color lock formula. Up to 16 hour wear. New Superstay Vinyl Ink, Maybelline, New York. Oh, welcome back in this episode of Let's Be Real. Of course, we are having great conversation, <laughs> different perspective, different dynamics, and our views are totally, totally different. It's for you there to make the right decision on whose view you'll take home. But let's move on to the next topic. Of course, we are on, we'll discuss. And before I go to the next topic, let's look at what we have on our tables today. Simon, what are you having? Hey, yo, right here, these yes. are things that will actually even help a lot of men out here who are watching us late at night. Yes. A couple of nuts right here. Yes. You can actually even put them down your throat and let them go out. Mm. Really, Simon? And indeed, this is because of Willie Collins, by the way. Really, yeah. cashew nuts, they're actually flavored. Yeah, they're really, really, really good, actually. They can help you out as a man this time of the night. You know it. You know what I'm talking about, right? But they're actually really tasty, really good cashew nuts. I really they're honey coated? It. Yeah, honey coated. They're honey coated. And by the way, Lisa, before we. You know, you are here on behalf of Catherine Matsisa. Yes, <laughs> Let's talk my about her sister. wine. Her wines. She's yes. brought these beautiful wines in, and we've had subsequently many, many wine tastings yes. with Dr. C out there, on yes. shooting on The Real Housewives, of course. And after we finished filming, we've had many wine tasting events around Nairobi. <laughs> yes. And these are delicious wines. I'd like to talk about them because I do like my wines. Yes. Um, I love red wines or those hot, hot, sunny lunch a lovely delicious crisp rosé yes. and i have to say samantha wines the rosé is beautiful so these are grapes from spain mm. and currently in the samantha wine collection there is a red the white that we are enjoying yes. and the beautiful crisp rosé so if you're looking for good wine look on the shelves for samantha wines courtesy of dr c and it goes well with nuts <laughs> because <laughs> you don't want me to comment on that <laughs> nuts. because Yes. So, uh, we are going, we are moving into the next topic, and I want to bring you into this conversation. We talked about pay initially, but now let's look at when, for a long time, women were underpaid, for a long time, but nowadays, if you look at the gap, has been narrowing to an extent that there's a bit of equality in the pay between men and women. Some women even earn more right now than men, they do the same jobs. Uh, I was reading an article today on a newspaper, one of the newspapers, and it was someone was saying that when she joined the newsroom, there was only one woman. 
But today, if you join the newsroom, the, the majority of people in the news media is women. Yeah. So uh, what, is, what is your take, Lisa, and before I get, we play a video of Dr. C, wherever uh, she is in the diaspora. Enjoying. Enjoying, having some cheese. We're and enjoying as well, right, guys? We yes, are. We are. Yeah. There we so go. what's your view? And then so, we go to Dr. C. <clears throat> gender pay. Um, it, has, it has very much been in the past where men were always paid more for whatever reason mm. than any woman. But today I think it's, it, uh, those dynamics have ironed out mm. and women are, you know, they're fighting for their rights in many ways and fighting for their rights. And one of them is, I want to be paid the same as him because I'm doing exactly the same as Simon, you know. I can talk louder and quicker than him, <laughs> so we should be paid the same, right? Can you? Watch me. <laughs> there you go. Talk that talk. Talk that talk. <laughs> there you go. So that's what we do here. I, and I think that, you know, women out there would say, you know, if you are not being paid the same, go and have a discussion and say, excuse me, I'd like to talk about it. Because if you don't talk about it and you're not asking um, to get, um, how do you call it, subsidized for the lack of, of salary that you might be pay, getting mm -hmm. compared to your fellow colleague who is a man, nishariako. If you don't ask, you don't get. So it's about talking it through and saying, you know, we're doing exactly the same job, we're working the same hours, we're lifting the same weights, so the pay should be the same. You think so? Huh? Before even I have my speech, can we go to that, that video real quickly? Yes. Before, yeah. Yes, let's, let's, see. let's see what Catherine had to say. Yes. What do you have to say, Catherine? <laughs> Shocking news from Kenya, I was reading, that women are paid much less than men and from big corporations. And uh, this is shocking because as a business person, I just thought you get the best person for the job. And uh, the business person in me tells me the best person may be a woman or maybe a man. So why would you pay women less than you would pay um, a man? Some people think this may be a cultural problem in Kenya, thinking that all oh, the men are looking after the women, so the women need to, to earn much less. But I shall remind them there are so many more single homes where women are actually looking after the children. You're back. Ha, interesting take. But wait, before <laughs> even be, <laughs> very let's, interesting. Let's but, look at Vikash. What, yes, what do you think about that? Well, you know, I've worked for a lot of female bosses, um, majority of them. <clears throat> I think it's nothing to do with gender. It's actually to do with personality. Uh, gone are the times where, you know, we used to even say female don't know how to drive. Now we have a rally driver mm -hmm. here. Uh, my mom was a good driver. So I think those def definitions of this person shouldn't be paid because they're this gender, this person should be paid because they're higher. It all depends on how well you do your job. Now, even, even going on that is now there is also a lot within the corporate scene where now there is the, let's employ the woman let's even now have these training sessions for women even there's a lot of women catering to towards now the woman that, that side of things now could you even say that the men are heavily neglected when it comes to now aspects of our men actually being you know you know here's the thing now you close your mouth but you can, <laughs> <laughs> that mouth was too open <laughs> but the main thing is even when it comes to that aspect of things because here's what i mean I have nothing against even the women empowerment, which is actually doing a good thing. Mm -hmm. And now the, the payments, there's more money flowing in. Mm -hmm. And then now when money comes with a lot of confidence and a lot of now uh, buying power. Mm -hmm. And the good thing, here's the good thing about women having more uh, money, is because they are more spenders than us men. And hence, that they actually that now that. helps. The, that's true. It's not true. That is not, I mean, since that there's actually not, when it comes to social media, men, women actually even buy more actively than even uh, men. Not even social that, media. That go, is, go, even go even go in the streets, the women are catered more. Like even catered more as if to but be maybe clients. You're talking about their retail therapy, about their fashion and their makeup and their hair and everything. Or Whereas even men will go and spend money on whiskey and cigars mm -hmm. and cars. Okay. Oh, women are buying that also. Well, you look at it today, it's about the qualifications. I'm sorry. You have a better qualification. I'm a woman. Yes. I worked and I have studied hard to get this qualification. Yeah. So I do expect to get paid accordingly. That's not okay. a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. But again, it's about qualifications. So if you have opted to go on a holiday to Hawaii and not bother finish your studies, mm. Whose fault is that? Shariako. Nobody's fault. Shariako. Shariako. Yes. Listen, yes. let's no. listen to the cash. Let's listen to the cash. No, I agree with that because um, <laughs> it, it is about qualifications. But at the same time, we do get neglected. I'll tell you as a journalist, um, we went to cover some awards. So like the way they do the Oscars, 
uh, there's an awards that's called IFA, where, which has taken place abroad, and then you go and cover them, and you start interviewing actors mm -hmm. and filmmakers and all. The actors, the male will always go to the female, because they mm -hmm. want to be interviewed by the female. Of course. The female will not go to a male journalist because she wants to be, be interviewed by the, by the female journalist, because she'll feel safe. Of course. Now, who will get the lesser <laughs> interviews? True, I get you, the male. Yeah. Unless then, he's known. Yeah, and then you'll be told, ah, you did like three interviews, that person did 30 interviews, we'll pay that person more. We're qualified, we're doing the same thing, but then... But here's the thing, don't, um, it's also, there's not conflict to issues. Just because you're seeing a lot more women in the foreground does not mean in the background that there's as much women in the boardroom. And it, because there's a lot of things that, yes, you, women will get more uh, roles when it comes to any areas of communication, any areas of beauty, for example, even the influencer market. But then now when you look at the management side of things, is that the case? Now, there's also that yeah. aspect of things that you have to even look at when it comes to even um, power and actually money. I look at it this way, that, um, and I would look, there are some books which have been written in the past. Uh, one of them is by Maria Maba, mm -hmm. so long a letter. She's a Zimbabwean, where she records about African women and the struggles they have gone to the level they have reached now. And if you look at this country in the 60s and 70s, women were really, really neglected, and in, in many parts of the world before. So. The equality is when the embracing of equality, which is what brought women to the table of where they can go back to school. Remember that if you go to some rural cultures, women are married off at a very young and tender age. Yeah. Let, we have to be alive to the fact that in the city centers where education is available and skill sets and there's a lot of equality, there's, there's water, there's uh, uh, electricity, it's easier for a girl child to, to study. But in some areas in the far-flung parts of this country, many women drop out, first of all. Mm -hmm. So the ratios have been to get more women onto the table where men are. And it has not been a very easy job. Now, on the flip side, mm -hmm. in the cities where we are operating today, many men feel neglected because they have dropped out of school and women have become achievers. If you go to the universities today, mm. you'll find more women are taking education more seriously than the boy child. Because the boy child have dropped out, there are too many influences. And also this look, this, the, the, our hero system, the way we are nowadays, people do not look at a Mandela as his hero. They look at a Mike Sonko. He has more money, of course. Mm -hmm. they, he drives a big car. Our values have really shifted yeah. from what we were to what people own so you young men are thinking if this guy didn't go to school and he owned the whole empire why bother why bother go to school mm. yet the women are saying i do not want to be like my grandmother that woman really suffered in the kitchen true <laughs> that's true and even yeah, even yeah. have you seen i mean just been just asking there's now with empowerment and more salary have you seen a level of entitlement also from now, like now when you come into now, because there's a level of entitlement that can come with now when you now feel like you're empowered and everything. There's a little level of entitlement that can catch. Have you seen that in your, in, your, in your experience? I have as well. And I would also say one thing about women and young girls out there. Kenyan, yes. the youth today, I see these girls. They're hustlers. Yeah. yeah they're serious. hustlers. So like serious. you being a journalist, you know, you've got to speak up, push it, use those elbows that these young girls are doing because I want to fika pale. You know, the only way I'm going to get there is I'm going to open that door, I'm going to push my way into that boardroom and speak up. Well, you have to learn to speak up. If you speak push, up. How? Speak up. You push a woman, you're Be like, a man. Yeah, this guy is <laughs> <laughs> you're in problem in every because, way, man. No, no, if we look at it today, I mean, the, the, you know, we're lifestyle gigiri, as we're in the diplomatic hub. We have so many female ambassadors many. and high commissioners to Kenya. Many. It's amazing. I mean, they're probably around 20 or so today, which is a lot. I go for meetings, just had a meeting this week with the, the new Director General of the National Museums of Kenya. Mm. It's a lady. Yeah, it is. It's a professor, you know, it's fantastic. I love it. Our CSs in Kenya, we have so many CSs out there. And we have also many female ambassadors for Kenya out in the world mm. representing Kenya. So, you know, women have worked hard to get to where they are. So we should be proud of them. 
and we want all of the youth today to be proud of you. Do it right. Hustle. Hustle is a good. That's a true thing. And, yeah. we, and we need to kick the yeah, boy child in the cities their backside a bit. Yeah. yeah. Because they're too lazy. Speak up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the boy child is a bit lazy. If you that go to true. Eastlands, where my hood in Eastlands, for eh? example, where I grew up, you'll find that the boys are too lazy. All their girls of their age mates, their age mates have gone to school, they are doing better things. But the boys are just chewing muguka. Mm -hmm. And what do they, they are talking in, in, in slow motion, shembeteng. Yes. My friend, shembeteng, yes. wake up and go to school. That shembeteng won't take you anywhere. Oh, oh, it, could, it could take you maybe just one step forward, then ten steps backwards. That's somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's somewhere. And speaking of somewhere, by the way, yeah. even when you're talking about cases of even guys just sitting around and even just um, doing drugs and everything, there's a level of mental um, health issues that can come into play. Before even we are doing that topic. Yeah. Yeah. But you see, while we're talking about this, I think I'm sure that these boys who are now not being able to do this and they get judgment from society and be, they are told, speak up. Yes. And when they can't, <laughs> they're feeling depressed. Well, yes, that's how you feeling, but... No, not I'm me. Sorry. <laughs> my fault, my fault. Man. I never... <laughs> but there's, there's genuine anxiety to perform now, to outdo, to, to this pressure. True. By the way, before we go on, can we hear what Catherine had to say about this, by the way? She's right there. Yeah, she is. Listen to this. So guys, I just want to say it here and now that I think the word mental health is really being misused everywhere because not everything has got to be mental health. Like earlier we discussed uh, domestic home workers and how they're they just turning really uh, like a tragedy with their employers, like, you know, using weapons against them. Some, some of those are not mental health issues. Some people are just bad and they're bad. They're thieves, they're thieves. We have to call it for what it is. However, it's very normal that if there's an economic downturn, then people, it's actually going to have an impact on how you feel. And how you feel, if it is not in the normal range, then it's a mental health issue. Hey, you heard what she has to say? But right now, what do you think about that? Like, do you feel any pressure even as a man? Uh, like even right now, when it comes to even mental health issues, you're saying that even the pressure, what pressure, like, does it drive you to do better or does it drive you to now, now more depressed state? So the thing is, mental illness is a thing. It's real. It's yeah, here yeah. and it's been there in the past. Maybe it was just brushed off. Today it's more spoken about, it's more known. But the thing is, I firmly believe it's so expensive to try and get treatment from it. Because I remember this one time when I'm, uh, I had a lot of difficulty trying to go, go to sleep. I couldn't sleep. And I went for therapy and I, somebody gave me some therapist number and I called that number and I said, um, hey, I'm having difficulty with sleep. And she told me, all right, you can come see me. My charges are 30,000. I kid you not, I slept right after I found out, I found out her prizes. That's, that was therapeutic. <laughs> that was therapeutic. That, you know, sometimes money, like the, the high prices can be just shock you back into reality. Yeah, like, yo, it's that expensive, I, I can sleep. No. <laughs> <laughs> but even but if... You know, I, that's what I think. Like, I, I've been talking to so many people. I did a show, uh, a play, which was called Manic Monologues, which was about mental health. And when I dug deep inside, you come to realize, and I don't know about the gender equation here, but I do believe women are easier to communicate their feelings, their emotions, they find someone to always speak to. Men are having a lot of difficulty. Mm. Now here's a problem. If someday I'm having, say, suicidal thoughts, and I talk to a friend, and my friend's like, oh, I'm not the best equipped person to help you, here's a number of a therapist. This guy gives you a number of the therapist, the therapist says, all right, it's 5,000 per session. I'm having a rough time. I'd rather spend 5K on my, I don't know, my child to pay the fees mm -hmm. or something than put it in therapy. Now what happens? I've not been able to emote what I'm going through. Those thoughts are still piling up, piling up, piling up. It's not cheap to, to get help when you're mentally ill. That's true, because even when you even think about, even I would even say, don't you think to some extent because of the way that people are constantly talking about mental health, mental health has even been commoditized. And it's an industry it on is. its own. Or and big it's time. actually a big time industry in which people are actually able to monetize. For example, the therapists, there's apps like out there for even you actually go and get some therapists. You can just go online yeah. to do that. It's, it's actually a monetized industry. It is so true because 
I agree imagine with you. this. You're going through something, you're having these thoughts and these thoughts don't have a 9 to 5 job, right? <laughs> the thoughts can come at 10 a.m., 10 p.m., anytime. Your therapist is not available at that time. Your therapist says, okay, my job is between 9 to 5, you call me this time, so I'll, I'll help you out. After that, you're on your own. Mm. Now she tells you, I'll contact you, our next uh, meeting or session is on Monday. Are you telling me your thoughts are like, okay, l leave this guy till next weekend? Put them on hold. Uh, we'll, on Monday. <laughs> we are. Let's, let's, we'll yeah. listen let's get Lisa. back to this. Let's listen to yeah. Lisa. So I think let's also there, it's, it's, you know, I've never seen a therapist, psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever. And just before we started filming Real Housewives of Nairobi, mm. we were told each one of us, we have to go and sit with um, a psychiatrist. Mm. And I why? was thinking, why? Anyway, off I go. So I've never sat with one of these people. Let me go and see what it's all about. Mm. And I actually thought when I walked out of there mm. that I was the one who became the psychiatrist and was counseling yeah. the psychiatrist, mm. the young girl. <laughs> because what experience has she got? But she's just come out of studies. She's young. She didn't know anything. She was asking me all these questions, mm. you know. So when I left, I thought, what have I gained out of it? They should was be paying me, wrong? not the other way around. I <laughs> therapized you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I hear you. But I'll tell you also something which I would like to share with everybody mm. is when I was going through my weekly chemotherapy in uh, South Africa, I was on life support because my lungs collapsed, I hemorrhaged into my lungs, and I technically died. So I was on life support, I had a trachea here, mm. pipes attached to every part of my body. Mm. For five weeks, it was the quietest time of my life, yeah? Mm. Even for, I couldn't talk. So I had to write everything down. I was introduced to something called The Journey mm. by an American lady called Brandon Bays, who realized all of these emotions and your therapists are not available when you need them at that particular moment. So your emotions get attached to your organs, mm. right? And you become sick and you actually layer them, especially men. We're talking about men who are not very good at opening up and expressing their feelings. Mm. They push them down. till so one day, wah, there's an explosion. Mm. And it's an explosion where you just let rip, you get drunk or you just go, walk away from everything because you can't cope anymore. Where Brandon was like, you've got to talk about it because don't ever keep anything inside. Even if you talk to yourself in the mirror, talk to yourself, talk to your phone, call a friend. That's what friends are for. So yes, even if that friend might not be the friend to give you advice, let them just be ears. So you offload that. So never ever store anything in here because that's when those emotions can come back from even your childhood when you when your best friend pushed you off that swing, your mm. grandmother, your shosho that you were so close to died. You know, as a little human being, you're, those are big emotions and you're not able to express it, really. So express it is what I'd like to tell everybody. Don't store it, don't keep it, don't sink it down mm. with alcohol, but talk about it and write. I believe in writing, I believe in journaling. Mm. And I would like to encourage, especially the youth, take that pen and paper every day, journal. Mm. Write those notes, make it your diary. It's fun as well because you look at it and they, yeah, hey, I did that last week really because our days go by so fast, hours escalate and we forget. So just make whoever wants to, whoever wants to, doesn't want to talk or you talk to yourself. That's interesting. Even if I want to ask you a question, yes, yes. even from your perspective, from a man to man perspective, I just want to understand mm. this. Do you think that men and women process emotions the same way? to be able to now express it in, in, in a certain way because and then hence even the question will go further, do you think therapy is really for everybody? You see, um, I'll, I'll take you back a bit to the way we people relate. And you see, m the biggest problem we have is lack of support systems. When people keep emotions, it's because you don't have the right support. If you don't have a right support system, and when we talk about mental health right now, being the biggest is because of one, and I said before, is cost of living. There's a lot of things you need to do, and you're going through these challenges alone. In the past, people used to go ar ar around the challenges as either family, as friends, and they were genuine friends. The phone was not there. There was no one on social media all through. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to reach out, you'd call your friend. You'd go sit down. And th there were elaborate ceremonies of each and everything, elaborate, from birth, celebration, to death. Nowadays, all that flipped with technology. Mm -hmm. And the way it flipped with technology, our values also disappeared with that technology. So the human values which we had put, friendship, 
uh, loyalty. These things which were important, love, went. We commodified each and every thing. So we started looking at things. I look at Lisa. What value? How much will I get from Lisa? Oh, what will Simon give me if I do this? Initially, it was not like that. It was, I'm loyal to these guys. I'm a friend to this guy. This is the That's value true. we share. We go to this church together. We go to this mosque together. We play these games together. And that one, people unpacked their emotions. Mm -hmm. So there was easy because of those social halls. Nowadays, if you go to Nairobi, there are no social halls. They clubs. Yeah, they are not there. They are <laughs> clubs. They got clubs. <laughs> yeah, and even for the, so for the lower income areas, there are social halls. You go to Tomboya Social Hall. The clubs are for the affluent. So, yes, there are clubs for affluent where you can... Oh, yeah, I guess, I guess. Yes, okay. but there are social halls. If you go to Shaurimoyo Social Hall, it's, it's for the people who are middle and lower. But they would go there and organize themselves. You go to Kibera Social Hall mm -hmm. where they... So this is where people would nurture, nature, and all do those things together. So this thing died. So now we commodified the world. Then we brought in the money aspect. And then our values disappeared. Uh -huh. So we are here today because we cannot force, we cannot face our challenges individually. So we keep it and it piles and piles until now we over, it, it blows us off. And that's why we see now we have more psychiatrists. Huh? We have more psychologists. Hmm. And then someone all asks you, oh, oh you, I think this guy, that is, he behaves weirdly. Lisa is not normal. <laughs> yes. Chief, you're going through a lot on your own. Yes. That's a lot. Hey, that's a lot to unpack right there. Cheers to that as we go on a break. Yes. Go ahead and take your Samantha wine with you right there. <laughs> take it down. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Hope you're enjoying the show so far. And it's now over to you. We're going to be talking about bromance. I hope you know what that means and what that's all about. But you're going to learn more right now. Lisa, thank you very much. But um, I was just chewing um, these cashew nuts. Honey. <laughs> honey coated. Honey coated. Honey coated. Honey coated. And they go very well with the Samantha wines. Oh, for sure. For sure. It goes well with Samantha wine. I do not drink, but uh, I advocate that you drink responsibly. Yes. Absolutely. Now, let's get back to our topic. Bromance, there's been, we've had a lot of issues in our country lately. And um, just recently, we had Mandamano, and many Kenyans lost their lives. Uh, many protesters, around 50 of them, were either shot by the police, they are brut brutally uh, murdered. And it was not a very good sight for the three days of Azimio uh, uh, Mandamano. And we are lucky that, um, and we, of, of course, we condole with the families who lost their loved ones, the ones who are in hospitals and all that. But also, we need to reflect and retrospect into what goes on in our political sphere, what goes on in our political space. And recently, uh, Right on Aburailo Odinga, the Azmio leader, and of course the president, William Samoe Ruto, had a, a bitter exchange. But it seems that the, the, the exchange is now, things have thawed between the two. And uh, William sarcastically, uh, Mr. President, said that uh, he's ready to, in, to invite the Azmio leader to a conversation whenever, wherever, at his call. And... The other time, uh, uh, Madam President Samia Suluhu uh, apparently came to Kenya. And it is true, Madam Samia Suluhu came to Kenya. He was in, uh, na, na, where, in uh, Meru. Uh, there, there's a hotel in Meru, uh, like Mount Kenya Safari Club. They had a meeting there. We had an information that they were there. But the question is that this fight between Azimio, Kenya, Kwanzaa, or streets, off the streets, it's impacting, it is impacting on us Kenyans. But when we've seen now that they've come close and they are talking, there's a bit of bromance, there's a, a, a bit of uh, getting along. Simon, mm -hmm. what do you think? Is, 
this is like a sibling rivalry kind of like on an upscale up echelon level because here's what i mean it's the sense of there's no in reality a lot of these guys they have each other's numbers mm. so it's like and then we can actually talk to mm. each other it's like me publicly actually saying that i have beef with you yes but right after this the lights go off we initially we're actually talking we're walking down the streets we're at, because even our kids engage yes. with each other so yes. and so forth yes. i don't have any kids by the way but that's the main <laughs> thing you know that sort of thing mm. but even when it comes to the, the bromance aspect of like even between men like let's say between men i say away from like the wild and brutal uh, level even just between men there's a camaraderie between even guys where there's like a loyalty and respect mm. amongst each other mm. once that is actually turned off mm. and you prick it the wrong way even as a respect, even I should have it for you, at the same way to even receive the information that you even sent to me, mm -hmm. because there's a way that we men communicate that women may take as aggression. Mm -hmm. But we know how we communicate. Even we can take that aggression in between each other. So even the bromance between men, yes, there can be friction, but how do you build that bromance into a way that I am loyal to you when we say, Simon, I have this project, let's be part of it. Mm -hmm. How can we actually sit down and quote unquote work together or rather we call it, let's talk? right with like they're gonna talk <laughs> but the main thing is the main thing is literally how do uh, even men actually now work together towards a common goal even beyond beyond the realms of just now uh, falling apart on betrayal and other things mm. or even well I don't know you know my definition of romance was so different Which one? Um, I, I, this particularly I think is a is a performance because True. I of yeah. course have the guy's number yeah. I could have just called him and said your doors are open but then how will the public know I've done that? So I have to put it out as a tweet. I have to put it out as a post. But I always used to be fascinated with how different like sisterhood is and bromance is. Mm. Women, if they don't get along with someone, they can fake it. Isn't it true? Like you, you, true. you can see another lady you hate. And you're like, oh, go on, man, man, the thing, thing. And then behind the back. Yeah, and then nice. as the minute she turns, I can't believe she breathes. And I'm like, huh? I can't believe she breathes. <laughs> Or did you, you know? see her hair? Yeah, like, like that, yes. For men, it's like, I don't like the guy, you don't like me. And I'm so you your face, actually. Yeah, we just, like, it's so obvious, like, yo, you don't like me, I don't like you, we don't talk, that's it. True, even, have you yeah. seen that difference between, like, ladies and uh, men, like, even that uh, romance between, like, between a sisterhood and a brotherhood? I mean, can you notice that but big the difference? Rivalry, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, there's huge rivalry. And, you know, I think that's what, one of the things, going back to what we talked yeah. about, wind, uh, women and gender roles in, in various societies, whether it's the pay or in the household, mm. that you have to really fight for your, for your voice to be heard yeah. as a woman, as a sister, Speak as up. a daughter. <laughs> so even, if, even amongst, <laughs> now for example, do women hear you though? Because there's also a different aspect of, even if you speak up, are you heard? And they ask me, like, for example, there's a way I can shout, and I'll, he, even if you shout at me, I'll be like, okay, cool, I can transact that mm. communication mm. because it's coming from him. But then if you speak up to me in a certain way, I would take it differently when he takes it. You know, there's that difference in brotherhood and also... But I also think it's also the, the, yes. the level of your voice. Yes. How do you communicate? Not there's projected. different ways that you project it, approach the subject and talk about it, okay? So it's about having the right strategy. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. Yeah, so so I, I agree that the brotherhood and the, the bromance between man and... And uh, it's always different from sisterhood. But in political, in, in political sphere, there's what we say playing for the gallery. Remember that if, for example, today, any politician in this country decides to, if Uhuru or Ruto come together, the public will really suffer because there will be no altercation. And if they agree, no one will check and balance the other. Because remember that at the center of all this fight is finance, it's resources, it's contracts, it's business deals. Power. It's power. It's a game. And that's why Charles, Sir Charles Njonjo said that politics is a very dirty game. I always disagree. Politics is a very clean game. Politicians are very dirty. Is, is that the case if, because even this office politics... There's always politics even within the family. There's also politics within many aspects, even between friends, as you mentioned, backstabbers amongst ladies. Absolutely. That's a political game. Even the, um, even the name in itself, being politics in itself, is not necessarily a positive word. 
you're very politically correct. What does that mean? You're not authentically you, you're just catering to the PR stunt of who you want to portray to others. So even the name politics in itself is not a positively oriented it is, name. It's it so, is not. So even you saying it's a clean game, now even making it look at you like, no, you're a clean it's, person. It's the politicians <laughs> who are dirty. Remember that if you want to play politics of issues, no one will elect you. If today I want to vie and I say that I'll finish corruption in this country, mm. I'll be number last. Because corrupt, corruption and the cartels would like a corrupt person at the center of it. No, no keyword, say. You will? Say. Just you say. will say that you want any corruption. That's what every politician does, right? Mm. You will say that you will have lower taxes. That's what every politician does, right? You will say that the cost of living will go down. That's what every politician does, right? Mm. You can say, but will you do? There's a difference, there's a disconnect, and that's what now politics come into play. I will yeah. say, even, even let's go back now even to the relationship between Rome and so forth. You don't respect another brother when now you tell him, hey, we we'll have this project, 10 a.m., be there for us to begin this thing. I will say I will be there. Does he do it? The action is what leads to the credibility of you as an individual. The saying is the politics. Now, that's even when you even come, even when you mentioned even about uh, ladies backstabbing and so on and so forth, is now they will say, you look so good today. I love the cowboy boots. Yeehaw! But then now the thing is, behind the back, they say, oh my God, I'm missing those boots or whatever, whatever. That is saying, look at the action. That shows your content as an, as an individual, and hence, you're not actually someone who's trusted and you lack character. So yes, politics is indeed is evil, but it also has its role to play. Being even political savvy is also where you can actually gain a lot of power and how you maneuver around. So even that's why even I say lean into that evil political side. Don't let everybody tell you to gene now to be whatever. Lean into it because it gets you ahead. Because there are a lot of people who are not savvy enough to see through your political correctness. That's the fact. Well said, Simon. <laughs> well <Because> said. <laughs> I feel like this guy has a career as a politician. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was about what to say for you. <laughs> we'll vote for you, Simon. You vote I would. for me. I'll vote for you. I agree with you because they, that's, there's a reason why there's a statement, action speaks louder than words. Yes. And this is not just in romance or sisterhood. Even in love, you've got to believe if you're in, with, in a relationship with a female, she can tell you all, oh, you're, you know, you're the one. I want to be with you and you're the guy I'm in love with. But then she's also chatting with other five guys, she's in somebody else's <laughs> inbox. So it's always action, you gotta see action. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth, by the way. And even when so, it comes to, yeah, go ahead. I, I think, okay, proceed, proceed. No, even when it comes to even the actions, that sort of thing, we've seen some very severe actions that have been going on for very many Kenyans out here. Yeah. And uh, this is a serious issue even when it comes to um, our Kenyans, even the export of, you know one thing we have as Kenyans is that mm. our labor force, is abundantly robust. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of youthful energy. That's one yeah. core thing that a lot of people are even tapping into. Mm -hmm. Even now when you hear even the Americans that are coming in, German, um, uh, I heard even there was a notation like maybe even uh, the Germans are even looking at tapping into our resources even when it comes to the labor force. Because that's what even we as Africans have in great wealth. And a lot of Kenyans, what happens? We go to now Middle Eastern countries like Saudi Arabia, the Middle oh. East, and then now what happens a lot of times, we're mistreated because they there view us as now a lesser being, and hence when we come doing work, we're degraded, and we're actually now mistreated in many ways. And that's many cases where even you see a lot of even your relatives, and you've seen the stories in the news where many ladies are out there mistreated, even the men out there mistreated when they even underpaid, so on and so forth, and then they castigated. Even on that aspect of things, um, even just when you hear your thoughts on that, even as you take your sip of water, chug it in. <laughs> your thoughts on that, when you hear um, even these stories about Kenyans who go out there and they've exported out there, they go out there with so much potential, like, I got it! I finally got the visa to go out there, get that job, because there's no job in Ruto's economy. And then now, what happens is now, when I go out there, this is my key card, but you've only given yourself a key card to a whole dungeon right there. What do you think about that? Um, I mean, yeah, you, you know, you, so many people escape one place to think there's greener patches somebody else, somewhere else and then you realize, man, I was just better off where I was. Mm, that happens a lot. Yeah. And that's even, and that's a scary thing because even you've heard many scenarios, especially ladies. Ladies who go out there into these, like I said, Middle Eastern countries, it's dangerous without having 
I mean, do they have a contact person? Is there somebody there that they can actually call and get guidance on the culture? Because it's a completely different culture, it's different religion. Mm. It's a different way of life altogether from the life in Kenya. So it's important to know, do they actually have somebody who can educate them on this new life before they jump on that plane? What do you think the government should actually realistically, because they have said a lot of things, realistically, can they really do, in order to not even protect even our daughters, even our sons, protect even the resource called work, like we have a labor force, that's our resource. How can they collect, collect I mean, protect that as we go so, out there? I've, I've always said that um, one of the biggest problems is lack of uh, knowing who is doing this business. Because the organizations who are taking Kenyans to Middle East are not necessarily properly registered. We do not know the owners. We do not know the undertaking. You see, when you want to hire and you want to export your labor force, we need a proper governmental structure where we say every year 500,000 Kenyans go to Saudi Arabia. These are the jobs they are going to do. The person who is taking this Kenyan must be responsible enough that we've checked and ticked that he is genuine, he is doing the right business. Because what happens is out of desperation, most of Kenyans are highly qualified but extremely desperate for any job to do. So now you are a young girl, you're in the village, and someone calls you and tells you, and I see them in town, if you go to Nairobi like tomorrow in the morning at 8, you'll find girls like 50, 100 walking in parks mm. with their bags, they're being shipped. Some of the government people who are actually doing these businesses are CSs in this government. And it is very easy to make money because what you say, you tell them, well, I'll bring you 500 people. My cut is 20,000 per person. This one is a desperate person. You can use her the way you want. There's no JD. There's no what you're going to do. You, you go there. You'll wash the house, wash the dogs, and even have sex with the dogs. Mm. It's allowed. That's what they want. But you see, when you're going there, you are being hired with a fake promise. The promise is that you're going to be a domestic manager. Mm. They'll tell you, I have only one kid, and uh, you live in your own a separate room and all that. All these things are not there. So it's a government to pressurize the government of Saudi Arabia and say, it's, a very, it's for a very long time, our citizens have been mistreated. 50% of them have come in coffins. Back. 50%. Is it that that's high? That's yes. Terrible. It's that high? Yes. Seriously? Yes. That is very yeah. high. Yo, that's, that's a little bit too high. I mean, people die. People are brought in every week. It's only that it's not beamed in the media. So it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. And the rest of the guys, when others are fractured mentally to a, a level that you cannot even recognize. Others go to, uh, through mental disability after that because of what they have seen. Only a few of them get good employers and are legally employed. I get you. Even, I even mm. just want to you, I just want to ask because a lot of these victims are ladies because they're vulnerable and everything. Even before a lady now chooses to go now Saudi Arabia out of desperation, what do you think a lady should actually now do mentally to actually now empower themselves so they're not in a state of desperation, like you mentioned, so that now they can actually make more empowered decisions? But I think it's important that they find out who is there, who is going to be there as my contact person. And I understand now that um, mm. the Ministry of Foreign Affairs here has put out a helpline um, so that if you are in a situation, mm. for example, in the Middle East and completely start, call this number and there will be somebody that you will be able to talk to. So as long as they know this is your helpline, mm. this is your SOS mm. contact, it's important and important to find out who is the community, who are the other Kenyans working here. So you can actually create a community and you can have a support system. That's key. Even, let me ask you, by the way, is there an, a figure amount that someone can throw at you and say, boss, this amount, well, let's go to Saudi Arabia? You know, the funny thing I picked from today's episode is, Kenyans just do no background check. They don't background the house helps. They don't background the future. <laughs> you don't know who you're hiring. You don't know who, who is hiring. When a, when a big figure is thrown in your, you're like, okay, this is interesting. 
The temptation? Yes. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, and that happens everywhere, even here. Yeah, because that happens uh, even now. You can't uh, just even uh, just from asking you, is there a figure that be thrown at you? Be like, you know what? This might be interesting. A certain radio station that throws a figure at you, and you have no idea how the work ethic is there. I mean, that. you know, we live in Kenya where everything is attractive. We're eating nuts right now. <laughs> and you're going nuts about celery. <laughs> celery is also in peanuts. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so any amount out there, we're like, yo, if it's in dollars, if it's in pounds, we're like, yeah, we're yeah, coming. <laughs> we don't even care about the cost of living there <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. and the value. Uh -huh. Yes. Or even the economic sense, or even what's going around yeah, and everything. Yeah. yeah. But that's the key thing. That's even what happens when you're in a state of like now desperation. Because even when you mentioned about even the government, but the key thing is I would say provide a conducive environment for even yes. to build yeah. prosper. Yeah. Even environment for even a lady to now say, okay, cool, I look up to you, then now how can I become like you in the present country that I'm actually in? So even us Kenyans can actually say, hey, listen, I'm proud to be a Kenyan and I'm proud to be in Kenya and I can be someone actually in this country that I'm actually in. That's actually a key thing, that even now a message I want to leave with you. Yeah. Viewers. Yes. Well, thanks. Nice uh, I, I, think, I think we agree that we don't do background the way Vikasha said. <laughs> we, we really do, do our background. <laughs> You just hire. You this just guy, get hired. Yeah, hire that yeah. guy. He looks cool enough. Yes. So let's end this show today. Thank you so much. I've had a lot of fun. Yes. And it's been wonderful to have this discussion with the three of you gentlemen. Yes. And hopefully see you again. Most yes. definitely. Most definitely. Exactly. Yeah, you've brought in some very interesting perspectives, even understand all things. Nice to meet all you guys. It's been Thank nice. You, and thank you so much for your attention. I just feel like 2027, if this guy stands for elections, we're voting for him. We are, right? <laughs> exactly. And I'm not even corrupt. I keep it real because I'm on. Let's, Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, we've had great conversation. We had different perspective in this show today. And of course, great host, Lisa. Karibu sana. Asante sana. Na we appreciate sana. you. We come back again, of course. Simon, as usual, always on top of his game. I'm on. And Vikash, we will Bravo. do our background check next time. Man. On you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. Every Sunday.